for Bruce has the call. Thanks, Deputy Speaker. Um, it's been terrific actually sitting through the contributions of those opposite, but I think, having listened to some of them, I'm just going to issue a trigger warning at the start. Just a trigger warning. I'm going to say wage rises. Wage rises for workers, which is obviously a very upsetting and concerning phrase given the kind of demented reactions opposite we've had all day when we talk about this. The Secure Jobs and Better Pay Bill, let's be very clear. The primary purpose of this bill is to get wages moving again. We've heard the blather and the noise from the bin chickens over there for the last 24 hours, but there's a cost of living crisis in this country. Everything order, is going order, up except order, your the wages. The opposition leader the thought he was very clever running seat. that. The minister, the shadow minister. Uh, rather, uh, that was an unparliamentary Bradford. term, and the member should withdraw it. Uh, order, order, <laughs> order. Can the member for Bruce assist the house, please? I will assist you, Deputy Thank Speaker, you. by withdrawing. Thank you. The member for Bruce that, has the call. Those, those things I just said. Everything is going up except the wages in this country. Electricity, gas, bills, food, rent, goods, services. But the cost of living has two components. Let's be clear. Two components. The price of goods and things that people pay for and wages that people earn. It's money in, money out. I know that's a very difficult concept for the former government over there that left the country with a structural budget deficit of $40 billion, nearly a trillion dollars of Liberal debt and not enough to show for it. So we'll just break it down. It's money in, money out. Now, the budget that the government just handed down, the, government we, the budget we handed down included cost of living relief without putting upwards pressure on inflation, cheaper childcare, cheaper medicines, extending paid parental leave, affordable housing, without the cash splash that we saw from the former government that pushes up inflation. So that's one side of the equation, small sentences. This bill is the other side of the equation. This is about getting wages moving, putting more money in people's pockets, the trigger warning that I gave you before. Now, after a decade of the Liberal Party being in government, let's be really clear on their record, real wages were lower in this country after 10 years of the Liberals than when they were elected. It's a shocking record. Australians are desperate for wage rises. And then they blame COVID. They cannot hide behind COVID, Deputy Speaker, because between 2013 and 19, six years before COVID, real wages were third last in the OECD. They'd fallen by 0.7 per cent even before COVID in this country. That's their economic record. The Secure Jobs and Better Pay Bill is critical then and urgent to get wages moving. It delivers on our election commitments and on the agreements made right across the country through the Jobs and Skills Summit. It promotes job security, new laws to stop employers from misusing fixed-term contracts with new limits. It will help close the gender pay gap. It will modernise the wages bargaining system and reform the Better Off Overall test. And it will ban job ads that advertise jobs below the legal minimum. I mean, I can't believe that it was ever legal to advertise job ads at $10 an hour, $15 an hour, and trick people, often vulnerable migrants and students, into working under slave-like conditions. Why do those opposite oppose this legislation? But first, before we go into that, I just want to call out the nonsense, the hysteria that we've heard from the Liberals, the dregs, the leftovers of the former government. The manager of opposition business. Deputy Speaker, the member appears to have a problem with repeated use of unparliamentary language. He's doing it again and he needs to withdraw. It's easy to withdraw, so I'll withdraw that. But leftovers is fine. The Speaker confirmed that. So let's go with leftovers the of the for former Bruce government. In continuation. The hysteria and the fear mongering about this bill is all they've got. Now, Senator Cash, who is indeed, as the Leader of the House told us yesterday, a gift to the nation by leaving her in that opposition shadow minister uh, portfolio, she says it'll lead to more strikes and less jobs. 
They're spouting hyperbolic nonsense. She looks like a demented real estate agent popping up, running these weird lines. It'll unleash industrial and economic... Excuse me, that was unfair. I'll withdraw real estate agent because that was unfair to real estate agents. It'll unleash industrial and economic chaos. Quote, unions will rule over the ashes of Australia. The bill will potentially close down Australia. If wages go up, Australia will close down. We are, and these are quotes actually from speakers over the last couple of hours. If we raise wide, raise, rise, wage rises through this bill, it will be feeding the beast. Uh, the member for wherever she's from, she said, all businesses will go broke. Businesses will all just close. That's apparently what's going to happen if this bill is passed. But let's be clear what's really going on. The Liberals are desperate to stop this bill, Deputy Speaker, new Deputy Speaker, as it will reduce barriers to bargaining and actually get wages moving again. That's the point of the bill. And it will especially help lower paid workers who are overwhelmingly female workers. Now, the Liberals always fight against wage rises in a decade. Not one piece of legislation in this country, not one real action to ever push wages up. That was a deliberate policy that they have. It's the entire point of the Liberal Party, isn't it? I mean, when you boil it down, you strip away all the rhetoric and the nice little dot points and the cute little phrases. They exist for two reasons. To protect those who already have the most wealth and to stop workers getting a greater share of the pie. That's the point of them. That's who donates to them. That's who funds them. That's who props up the whole rotten edifice over there. But I'm proud of the record already of this government. We've shown our colours. 5.2 per cent. We backed it at the Fair Work Commission, a rise to the minimum wage. Last week, we backed a rise for aged care workers. The Royal Commission recommended it. The former government wouldn't do it, and we did it. 15 per cent wage rise for aged care workers. The former finance minister admitted in a rare outbreak of truth moment that it was actually a deliberate policy of the former government. Quote, it's a deliberate design feature of our economic management to keep wages down. That's what he said. Another uncharacteristic outbreak of truth this week, I think, from the shadow treasurer. He was asked a question by journalists. Why does he oppose the industrial relations changes? And he said, because it would push up wages. He should probably tell some of the members, because we just heard quite a number of them say in the same speech, this is an outrage because it will push up wages, and then in the next breath, but there's no evidence that wages will rise. That's a direct quote from the member for Melly who just spoke. It is amusing also when they talk about productivity. If those sitting here, we would have heard a bit about productivity. Apparently it's going to hurt productivity. Well, it's nonsense, but it's pretty bizarre they raise productivity because their record on productivity is amongst the worst in the OECD. Over their decade in parliament, in, in office, their decade in, in government, we saw less productivity before COVID under the Liberals. In 2013, we were ranked 10th highest in the OECD for productivity, 1.7 per cent growth. You know, not terrific, but a damn sight better than their record. 2018, fifth last, negative productivity growth, minus 0.3 per cent. They have no basis to lecture us on productivity. Now, Deputy Speaker, the bill is urgent. There are claims falsely that it's rushed. There's been extensive consultation. There'll be a Senate inquiry. There's been months of consultation with employer groups, with unions. That's, it should have issued another trigger warning before I said unions for those over there. Academics and experts, the Jobs and Skills Summit. Australians want this done. Wages are going up at 2.6 per cent now, yet inflation is running at 7.3 per cent. So no, in answer to the cries from those opposite, we can't wait another month. We can't just think about it for a little bit longer over Christmas. Australians have waited for a decade as their wages fell. They shouldn't be made to wait longer because of delays here, because the parliament can't do its job that it's paid to do. It's been through the election, it's been through the Jobs and Skills Summit, there's been months of consultation. And in particular, in closing, Deputy Speaker, this is so important for women in this country. For too long, women's work has been undervalued and underpaid and concentrated in insecure sectors and conditions. Our economic recovery from the mess left by those opposite cannot be based on women's work continuing to be undervalued and unequally paid. The gender pay gap in this country is 14.1 per cent. And let's be very clear, this bill will put upwards pressure on wages, which is what we need, 
but it will particularly enable lower paid workers in female dominated industries to actually have a fair crack at the enterprise bargaining system. Yeah. Only about 14.1 per cent of workers in this country now have access to the enterprise bargaining system. That needs to improve, and in particular, we need to help those lower paid female workers. I commend the bill to the House. I thank the honourable member for Bruce for his